Hey everyone, it's Steven. I have got the 2020 Audi SQ5 with me today. I am in St. Louis for a quick Memorial Day weekend trip and thought I wanted to get something fun, a quick performance SUV. Um, this is actually my first time driving something in that segment. So I wanted to give a quick review, um, you know, go over the overview, exterior, interior, tech, uh, show some driving, um, and then finally close off with some thought, overall thoughts and recommendations. The SQ5 is the performance version of the wildly popular Q5. This is Audi's best-selling vehicle in their lineup. It fits right between the small Q3 and the larger Q7 and Q8. So you can see here, it's got really attractive styling. One of the biggest reasons this car does so well is because it really combines comfort, uh, you know, great styling and uh, kind of sportiness. You would be surprised at how quick the normal Q5 is. This takes that up a notch as it is the SQ5. For those of you who don't know, Audi has S line models and then also RS line models. RS is kind of the really performance version. Um, those unfortunately don't exist for the Q5 so far, but um, I really wish Audi would make an RS Q5 because that would be super fun. Um, but right now, the SQ5 competes with things like the Macan S. It actually shares an engine with it, which is really interesting and from the Volkswagen group. Um, and it also competes really popular uh, AMG GLC 43. That's probably one of the biggest competitors. Um, and then you've also got the BMW X3 M40i. Those are the main competitors for this car. So the SQ5 starts at a base price of about $53,000 for the lowest trim, which is the premium. The model I have here is actually the premium plus, which brings it up to about 58,000. And with options such as the awesome S Sport package, which is a $3,000 package, um, this car actually MSRP is right above $63,000. For those of you wondering how the mileage is on this car compared to the normal Q5, um, a little lower as you would kind of expect from a performance variant. Um, this gets about 18 city and 23 highway miles per gallon. So really not that bad, kind of what you would expect from a performance car, but still, you know, if you're buying a performance car, you're not really hoping to, uh, you know, make that up in miles or anything like that. Um, and finally, you guys will notice um, if you're in tune with the automotive industry that uh, this car actually got refreshed in the, for the 2021 model year. It has a new grille, looks really, really good, really slick, especially for the SQ5. And it also has some refreshed uh, you know, exterior styling elements in general, but the grille is the big part. Um, and the inside has a new infotainment screen. That is a huge thing. It also has the updated MMI infotainment, which is more responsive and looks really, really good. All right, guys, let's talk about the exterior styling. I think Audi did a really great job with the SQ5. Again, like I just said, the 2020 model is actually, uh, you know, out of date now at this point. The 2021 is where you refresh the exterior, but you still see you've got a really handsome grill here. You've got the typical Audi logo, looks really nice, and you've got kind of these horizontal slats and these vertical slats. I, I won't say it's the most attractive thing. I think Audi always tries to be a little modest with their styling, um, but you'll notice that, you know, some of these blacked out vents here in the side and the blacked out, uh, you know, caps on the exterior mirrors, those are actually part of the $600 black optics package, which I think make this car look a bit more aggressive and definitely fit that SQ5 name. Um, so otherwise you can see you've got really nice daytime running lights. These are really gorgeous, full LEDs. Um, and I, I think they're part of the you know symbolic nature of how, how luxurious Audis uh, really are. And you can see here, we have got the Daytona gray pearl color. This looks really stunning in the right lighting. I feel like I wasn't sure if it would kind of differentiate itself from the normal gray, which Audi calls quantum gray. This is actually a $595 upgrade um, over the normal quantum gray, but it really looks nice, especially right after a wash. It looks super clean and gorgeous. Um, the wheels here, I think are one of the biggest standouts. These are an anthracite finish, which looks very fancy. Um, you've got this really interesting design here where these little you know white parts jut out a little bit. I wasn't sure if I would like that, honestly, but the more I'm with the car, the more I actually do like that. Um, but you can see you've got the gorgeous red brake calipers. I love that. Um, that is part of the $3,000 S Sport package. Moving along the side of the car, uh, the side profile is, like I said, modest. It really doesn't scream performance car to you, especially if it doesn't have the, uh, you know, the wheels and the red brake calipers, but you've got some aggressive body lines and kind of like in typical Audi fashion, it just looks quite good in general, but still a little modest. Going into the back, I will say this is one of my favorite parts of the Q5 in general, the sequential turn signals. I love this. Ever since Mustang started doing that a long time ago, right? This looks so good, and I still feel like this is one of my favorite parts of Audis, even the newer ones like the e-tron and all that sort of stuff. It just looks looks high tech, and I feel like that's one of the biggest things Audi tries to show you, that its tech is above the other competitors. One of my biggest pet peeves with the rear of this car, though, is the fake exhaust vents here. These look ridiculous. I, they're not real. And I just, I don't know who at Audi thought it was a good idea to have these. They luckily um, listened to the customer feedback and revamped these in 2021. You actually have quad exhaust for 2021. But for the 2020 model and uh, below that, uh, unfortunately, you've got these weird exhaust tips. 
So while we're in the rear of the vehicle, I wanted to show you guys the trunk space. This is, I wouldn't say a highlight of the Audi, but um, it is relatively competitive. It is on the lower side for the luxury uh, compact SUV segment, but you've got a 25.1 cubic feet of cargo space. Not terrible, but honestly, this should be enough for most people. So some interesting features in the trunk here. You have got these really cool uh, buttons that you can update the suspension with. You can move it up or down, as I can demonstrate right here. Audi actually says that these buttons are multi-purpose. On one hand, you can just change the suspension of the vehicle to your liking. On the other hand, you can lower the car to make it easier to put in groceries and other bags. You've also got some nice uh, you know, clips right here that you can pull to lower the seats in a 40-60 configuration. And finally, concluding the exterior walk around, let's go back to the front and talk through what's underneath the hood. This is the very famous 3 liter twin turbo V6. Uh, this produces 349 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque. Uh, this is mated to an 8 speed automatic and gives you 0 to 60 times of about 5.1 seconds. In the 2021 refresh, actually, they do update that to 4.7 seconds. They say that they got a little better with the rear differential and uh, that increased the 0 to 60 speed by point four seconds from my experience though and i'll show you guys this later in the review this is quicker than a 5.1 feels all right guys what a cool start of animation right there before we dive into the interior i wanted to show you guys what a cold start sounds like and also what revving the engine sounds like spoiler alert it sounds really really good all right so foot on the brake and start stop button is right there Heading into the interior of this car, this is something that Audi has always done really well in my opinion. Their interiors always look top notch. You can just tell from this door, right? Look at the carbon fiber inlays that is a $500 additional package there but looks really fantastic throughout the entire cabin. You've also got Alcantara leather upholstery. That's really nice for, uh, you know, something that's not the most high-end, you know, RS model, right? This is just an S but still feels really luxurious. Even this black interior, which normally doesn't look too fancy, right? I kind of want those red leather seats, but this looks really, really good, really high quality. This is a $1,000 package getting this really nice diamond quilted fine Napa leather, and it's so comfortable. Probably one of the nicest seats I've ever uh, you know, sat in, in any sort of car. The bolstering you can see is huge. It feels very sporty. You've got the S-Line. Um, logo on the seat back and just this qual this cabin just looks so high quality and you do have power control seats for both of the front passengers kind of as expected you've got lumber control here um, but I think it's only about 10 way or maybe six way it's really not that much um, it doesn't feel as luxurious as some of the other cars that I would expect for this price point and these seats do have a manual thigh extension so unfortunately not power but you can extend that which feels really good um, and kind of moving to the center area, you can see it looks very high class, right? You've got the carbon fiber inlays here as well. A $500 package, but very, very much worth it in my opinion. You've got an interesting little storage space here for your phone. I really just wanted to put my sunglasses here. Um, but yeah, otherwise the, the interior looks nice. You've got the S-Line badging right there as well, just so people know you're not just in a normal Q5 here. Um, you've got a USB port here, and you've got some more storage here. I actually thought for a moment that this was the wireless charging pad, but it's actually here. This is kind of a, a little bit of something that I don't like in this car. So the wireless charging pad looks great and works great here, right? But where are the cup holders, right? Turns out they're underneath this, so you actually have to move this back in order to access your cup holders. So most people just end up keeping, you know, in this configuration, which means you can't really use this too well. You still can fit something in here. So like you can still have a phone here. It just is a little impractical to reach, right? And taking a look from the driver's side perspective, this is a gorgeous steering wheel. I love the flat bottom. Definitely something required for sportier models. Um, and it just looks really good with the S-Line badging here. The steering wheel feels very comfortable, very well bolstered on the sides for, you know, good grip. <laughs> the tiny paddle shifters definitely do not do it for me and a lot of people, right? It's kind of ridiculous that <laughs> um, this is supposed to be a sporty model. A lot of people want to use those paddle shifters, but they really, I mean, they, they seem sturdy enough, but they're just not as fun, right? Like 
the I think the Alpha Romeo, those have some great aluminum paddle shifters. That's really what you want in a sportier model. And you can actually see that this card does come with the Bang & Olufsen 3D surround sound system. That is a $1,000 upgrade for the Premium Plus. Comes standard on the Prestige trim, but highly recommend getting that. This is one of the nicest sound systems I have heard before. So being a compact SUV here, you kind of definitely want to see what the rear seats look like, right? Same high quality finishes here, right? The, you've got the carbon fiber, which goes all the way in the back and the Alcantara leather upholstery. Love it, looks really great. You've still got the Bang & Olufsen sign here, which looks really cool because sometimes um, other sound systems don't actually put the label on the rear seats, which is a little different. So going into the back, this is definitely a nice place to be. Um, you've got that really nice sounding door and you've got a huge pano sunroof. Unfortunately, it's not one piece, but it does look really good. As you can see, all the water droplets right now from the drizzle we're getting here in St. Louis. But otherwise, the back is a nice place to spend time, right? You've got um, some really high quality things. You know, obviously this could be nicer than net is not the nicest thing here, but you've got ample leg room, right? Um, I did move the front seat up quite a bit, but in general, definitely still a lot of legroom here. You're definitely not going to be concerned about that. Um, you've also got some USB ports. You can see that they're charge only. And you've also got a outlet here as well. This does have tri-zone climate control, and that is actually standard on the base trim. But um, right now the car's not on, so you can't see it. But it looks really good, easy to use. Um, you've got some climate control vents here as well. Otherwise, um, the back is pretty nice. You do have a third full seat with um, you know a headrest as well that looks really nice and feels really nice so definitely not a bad place to be you know obviously two adults would be much more comfortable than three adults back here but otherwise you can definitely fit them and of course you've got the diamond quilted napa leather in the back as well that looks really really nice so opening the center armrest in the back here you can see that's got some cup holders here pretty standard nothing too fancy but it all does feel pretty high quality and overall makes it an attractive place to be. For those of you who are curious, this is what the key fob looks like. Looks pretty standard, typical Audi here, but you do have this really nice S-line badging on the back, which looks really slick. Um, but yeah, otherwise you've got your typical controls, unlock, lock, and you can open the tailgate and you have your panic button as well. Otherwise, I just really wanted to mention again how upscale this interior looks. I mean, this car is about $64,000, so you'd kind of expect that, but this still blows a lot of the competitors out of the water. I especially just like the nice touch, touches like this carbon fiber inlay, and of course the Alcantara leather upholstery. That really feels like something that belongs in a higher model, like an RS, right? Or that's something you'd find in an AMG, um, or, you know, the M models for BMW. All right, guys, let's talk about the tech here. This is something that has always differentiated Audi between some of the other competitors. It always felt like Audi had the edge in terms of infotainment and in terms of their technology in general, right? I mean, they kind of showed that with uh, certain cars, right? The e-tron, they really wanted to showcase that. Um, and the Q8, the Q8, I feel like was a huge splash in this market. And while the car hasn't been that well received in general, the tech has always been something that they complimented. So, um, the big highlight is definitely the virtual cockpit, like I mentioned before. So this is very configurable. You can see that there's a view button on the steering wheel and you can change how you want the view to display. Um, it's very, very nice. And you can kind of choose all the different, like it's so configurable. This is a very common view that a lot of people use. And I think Audi shows off a lot is their huge map display. Unfortunately, when you're using something like Apple CarPlay, <laughs> it's really not going to be as useful, but it looks really cool, right? There's no, <laughs> no one can say that this does not look cool. And this looks a lot better than some of the other competitors, even now. Um, I will say though that like, you know, unfortunate thing with this 2020 model here is that the 2021 updated infotainment just looks a lot better. It's faster to respond. It's clean. It is worlds better than the current one, in my opinion. Um, and I think almost every issue I have with the 2020 model, they actually address with the 2021 refresh, which is really cool. Um, Audi clearly does a good job listening to customer feedback and kind of implementing the changes. Um, but yeah, otherwise you have pretty much everything you would expect here. You can kind of scroll through a lot of different things here. Um, and, you know, pressing the side buttons here um, allow you to configure some different things as well. So it's a very, very configurable system. And I think, you know, the entire Audi group does a really good job with this Volkswagen, Porsche, all of them. Um, but I feel like, you know, Audi really is the one that started it. And this is the sport display that looks clean. And I love this display. Probably the best display I've seen for a uh, virtual gauge cluster. 
And you do have standard things like auto high beams um, and uh, you know, rain sensing windshield wipers. You have this interesting favorites button right here and you can also talk into the navigation to tell it to go somewhere. Um, this is also the uh, voice control for the car in general. Um, this is how you control the infotainment volume and skip track and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, it's an intuitive system, easy to use, um, and I really, I really do like it. We don't have adaptive cruise control on this, uh, which I, I still think is a little ridiculous. That's a huge feature that people are looking for, and everyone, I, I feel like I hope people understand how amazing that feature is for reducing driving fatigue and, you know, dry, uh, you know commutes and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, we only see that on the highest prestige model, which I still feel like it's kind of weird. Um, but otherwise, you've got your light controls here, fairly standard, very easy to use. Um, and then you've got two-way memory seats for um, the driver's side only. Moving to the center infotainment screen, this is actually just an infotainment screen. It is not a touch screen. Audi does change that in the 2021 refresh, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but the one that we have here is just the upgraded 8.3 inch infotainment screen, which I just, it, it's actually really crazy. I was just telling one of my friends about this, like this screen feels small. After driving so many other 2021 models, I mean, Audi clearly needs to refresh this, right? I cannot imagine using a screen like this, especially the fact that this is the upgraded screen. I cannot imagine using this in a 21, 2021 car that costs $63,000, right? I, it, it just, it's so interesting how the screens are just getting so large these days, right? In the Q7, the, up, the 2020 Q7, you've got the double display and that just looks fantastic. And I don't think they could really fit that in the car of this size, but still. Um, the 10.1 inch display touch screen looks a lot better. I will say though, this, um, touch, I mean this, uh, not touch screen, this infotainment screen is fast. Um, you use this dial here in the middle to control it and it's fast to respond. It's easy to use and I really like it. I, I do think that this is probably one of the better infotainment systems, um, you know, of the old era, I suppose. Um, but it's easy to use, it's easy to find things, um, and overall just a really great infotainment system. Um, this is the older one though. Um, they do update this for the 2021 Q5, so be sure to check that one out as well. You've got some pretty good buttons here. This does look very futuristic. I do like the look of this. You've got three-way heated seats here. Um, you know, pretty standard for a car of this price point. No ventilated seats. You have to get the uh, warm weather package for that. Fortunately, this car does not have that. You've got um, parking sensors here. They kind of, if you touch that button, it'll actually turn them on and you can see the rear view camera, which actually is not the best quality and only takes up probably about, what, three-fourths of the screen. So really kind of small. This part, this is actually one thing that I thought was a you know, I feel like this is a little embarrassing in a 2020 model, especially you're not in the base one, you're in the premium plus. This is $63,000. Um, and then you've got the front and rear parking sensors, which look good, but again, no 360 camera. <laughs> in 2021, the SQ5 premium plus does come with the top view surround camera system. So definitely a feature you can look forward to if you get the 2021 model instead. Um, but yeah, otherwise, um, in general, you've got some other pretty standard things here that you can turn off the auto stop start engine with this and you can change your drive modes here. You've got hill assist and this turns off the entire infotainment screen. You've got one USB port here as well. Um, and this is your actually, uh, your touch, uh, touch, uh, I guess, uh, pad in the middle. You can write commands and write addresses, things like that. Really not the most useful thing. Um, and I, I'm glad that Audi kind of did away with that in a lot of their future models. One interesting thing I wanted to call out here is that um, this does feel really good. It's very easy to use. I actually really like the design of this. Um, and you can see there's actually a standard drive mode and also the sport one. So this is actually really interesting because, you know, putting the car in dynamic mode does not actually change the engine and transmission response. So putting it into the actual S mode here is actually what makes it feel even sportier. And I feel like that's a huge differentiation that you need to make and you need to actually put the car into sport. And you can just do that by kind of shifting to it. Um, you can just change it like that. Um, but yeah, looks really good. You've got the electronic parking brake right here. Pretty standard things in the center console. I will say it's a little busy probably because of this, right? You just don't need this and you really don't need the weird things here and I think you know going to the touch screen very good idea allows you to clean up some space here and hopefully not have this weird thing going on with the uh, charging pad in the cup holder situation and finally closing off the tech portion there really isn't too much to talk about here um, you can do navigation you can pull up the map on the screen as well um, you know it really it's the same thing as the one in the virtual gauge cluster but the virtual gauge cluster looks more um, high res I feel 
And ultimately, like it's it just this, you know, most people are just going to use Apple CarPlay, right? This does come standard with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. No wireless though, unfortunately, that does come on the 2021 model, but not this one. And you know, like I said before, a setting very easy to use. This entire thing is very intuitive. And I, I do like the, the rotary dial. It's easy to use, it's, it's fun, it's clicky, it feels good. Um, it just feels a little dated at this point. So here I did want to show you guys what Apple CarPlay looks like. It does take up the full screen, which looks pretty good. Again, um, you know, the 8.3 inch screen doesn't look super futuristic, so it's not going to look as big as some of the rivals. The biggest issue here is that you have to use the rotary dial, which means you can't actually access any of this with a touch screen. And I feel like that's the biggest issue with using rotary dials these days is that uh, Apple uh, CarPlay and Android Auto are a lot more intuitive if you actually have a touch screen. So these are the fancy controls you get with the upgraded premium sound system, which in this car is the 19 speaker Bing and Olufsen sound system. You've got some pretty normal controls like your treble, bass, you've got subwoofer in this car. Um, the thing that Audi talks about is the 3D effect that comes uh, only with the premium sound system here. You can adjust what level you want and it sounds really good if you put it on high. All right, guys, kicking off the driving portion of this review. Um, this is definitely something that really shocked me with this car. It's how much fun this has been to drive. I mean, just listen to this. Like, that is impressive for something that, you know, it only has 349 horsepower, so it's not like, you know, the craziest figures, um, but it, it pulls and it feels really good. And I think even the normal Audi Q5 feels quite sprightly for its size, and I think that's something that Audi did really well here. The steering in this car is very, very predictable, and I feel like that is a big differentiating factor between this and a lot of other sports cars that tend to understeer or oversteer. Um, but I, I really like how this car feels, especially um, with how comfortable these seats are. This fine Napa leather, super worthy $1,000 package in my opinion. I would definitely recommend getting that. But otherwise, like I said at the beginning of the review, I think the reason this car does so well is because it has such a good balance. You know, it's, it's fast, you can hear the engine, right? It's fun, like, it, you know, it, it's fun, but it's also very comfortable when it needs to be. You can switch it to comfort. I have not been in comfort at all. <laughs> I think the entire trip I've been in dynamic, um, especially with the sporty steering as well. Um, and it's been really, really fun. I cannot get enough of that sound. I feel the sound is better than I expected, honestly. I feel like I read some other reviews that said the sound was a bit of a low point, but I mean, as you guys heard earlier in the review, that rev sounds very good. Um, and you know, overall, I just feel like this is a very fun car, but also comfortable. And I feel like some of the other models like the AMGs um, and the M cars, those actually give up a bit of the comfort to allow you to be a bit more sporty. And I, I'm just not sure that that's, you know, what everyone wants. So I do feel like the Audi has a good niche in this area. And as you guys can kind of hear in the background, cabin noise is very minimal. I don't think it's like, you know, the best thing. It's not going to be like the Range Rover I just drove, right? But it is quite quiet. I feel like there were a lot of, you know, sirens in the background and stuff like that before that I didn't even hear until I opened the car door. So I think that is a very nice uh, part that adds to the serene ride. Like I said, this car is comfortable and I feel like some of the other cars, you don't get that same level of comfort. All right, guys, I want to do a bit of a launch control here. So this isn't going to be the full launch control, but Here's some revs. Oh my god! <laughs> and that is so much fun. I feel like that is definitely, you know, that that gets my heart pounding. <laughs> I feel like that was so much fun. Um, I feel like I wish I could do that all the time, but these roads aren't the easiest to film that in. But um, but yeah, launch control very fast, right? I feel like in general, most of the sports cars in this segment will get you those times. But like I said before, zero to sixty five point one, it really feels faster, and I'm, I'm really impressed by that. Overall, this is a really nice car that I've thoroughly enjoyed driving. I think it's really, it'll change a lot of people's perspectives on what a performance SUV can be, right? Driving the M440i earlier this year, you know, that was super fun, but this is almost equally as fun and more comfortable, definitely a lot more comfortable and practical, right? So I don't know, it, it is an interesting thing where I, I totally understand why the SUV market is doing as well as it is, because when you can have an SUV this fast, like why would you go for something smaller unless you, you know, specifically want something smaller? So overall, I really recommend this for people who are looking for that balanced comfort and sport this is not going to be the sportiest thing in the segment, right? The Macan S, the AMG GLC 43, right? Those are definitely going to be sportier, give you more of those crackles and pops that a lot of people are looking for, but this still has those, right? It's, it's just not as, you know, as uh, pronounced as I feel like some of the other competitors are. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Um, this was super fun, and I've had a blast in St. Louis over the past few days. Um, you can check out my other videos here. Um, subscribe down here. Let me know what other cars you want me to review, um, and I'll see you guys in the next video.